This has been so much fun. Ward Stair, the uh, music director for the RPO, has been joining us a few times now. And we're going to continue this series because it's been so educational for <laughs> me. I absolutely love it. Um, and Alexis, who? Plays clarinet. Yes. Excellent. She's excited about <laughs> this also. I'm a musician. I always like that. <laughs> Maybe we'll talk a little bit sort of clarinet as, as the months go, go past. But right now, um, just some conversations with you that we've had that some of the behind the scenes stuff that I had no idea. We were talking, and, and I see we're looking at some pictures behind us. Of it all looks um, so so like it's a group that you guys must be together 24-7 practicing all the time. <laughs> and I was shocked to hear... When you guys actually come together and work on a piece, the time between the first coming together and the actual performance is not long at all. It, it really isn't, and it, it varies depending on the kind of program that we're doing, but for our Philharmonic series, which is our main series, uh, it's only four rehearsals. We start on Tuesday, and by Thursday evening, we're performing for the public. Well, you're dealing with a lot of professionals. So maybe people won't get the term sight reading. Maybe some people will. I mean, it just <laughs> seems like that's what you guys are doing until the performance the dreaded sight reading yeah that's uh, <laughs> sight reading of course for those of you who don't know is when you get a piece of music which is completely new to you and it's plopped in front of you and you have to just read it it's a very specific skill but no when we prepare a concert uh, all the musicians in the orchestra have their individual parts you know mm -hmm. prior to the rehearsal with plenty of notice uh, so they all come to the first rehearsal completely prepared individually but rehearsals are, are very exciting because we all have to bring our individual parts together mm -hmm. uh, in a very short space of time and for me as the conductor uh, I love it because um, you know I'll come to a rehearsal with a specific uh, thought in mind a concept for a piece of course uh, but if it's something that we've all done many many times before uh, every single person on the stage probably has an idea of how they would approach the piece and they give me those ideas in the rehearsal and I take them and then I kind of uh, get to craft them and, and we all come together and so I'll hear something that maybe I didn't think of in, in the woodwind section and take that and then we'll affect it, you know, how we work in the strings and so throughout that process it's a lot of give and take um, and then we can get everything together into a cohesive whole and then present it to the audience in a unified uh, vision. Yeah, I imagine that many of the performers or artists, they're doing other things so that probably limits you to how how much you guys can practice during the week together? Oh, sure. I mean, everyone, we're all very busy. We have a lot, a lot of people uh, teach, you know, when we're not performing. And uh, some people do other things. And then, of course, it's always nice to have a hobby or two. So, <laughs> um, but, uh, but it's really great. And when you have an orchestra this talented, uh, things can come together rather quickly. And preparing, uh, you know, when we go through this process, we're trying a lot of new things. So it gives us the ability to kind of be flexible in the, in the concerts themselves. And we can be really spontaneous. Uh, because, you know, we might have tried something in several different tempi, uh, tempo, of course, being the speed at which we perform mm -hmm. uh, in the rehearsals. And then, you know, if we're feeling particularly feisty one night, we might, <laughs> you know, I might turn it up just a little bit more. And, we're just, oh, and then we just go. And it's, it's just got that, you never quite know what's going to happen. It's kind of great and that's energy. why they need to watch you at all times. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> that's spoken like a true musician. You know? It's, it's all so exciting, and I imagine the excitement leading up to is, 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 must be hard to contain, which is why I was shocked when you told me what you do as a routine before each show. Oh, I take a nap. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Did you expect that? No. But no, me neither. It's like the calm before the storm, but, you know, with so much going on, you know, in, in our lives for everyone, I think, it's great to just, you know, I like to clear my head. I don't always actually fall asleep, but I always get in bed for a couple hours and just... Mm -hmm. I mean, I hope I try for a couple hours. Sometimes it's more like one or one and a half. Mm -hmm. And I just clear my head and get into a space where I can, I can really just focus on the music and, and make it all about that expression. <laughs> now, while you're napping, are you listening to the performance pieces or anything? I'm not listening to it on a device, but it's definitely going in my head. <laughs> And we got to sure. run, but November 8th is the next time someone can see. Uh, yes, I'm conducting. That's my first Sunday matinee at Hochstein. Okay. It's, it's a delightful program featuring uh, two soloists, actually, a singer and a double bass player. Oh. So, All yeah, right. It'll be a lot of fun. You come back soon and tell us more Inside Secrets, okay? I will okay? indeed. Yeah. Very good. <laughs> Coming up next, we're going to check 